Hey everyone, Rodev here, and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to make a teleport pad. And basically so far what I've done is created these two little parts, and I've scaled them down a little bit and made them like squares. And what we're going to do is uh, make them so that when you step on one, it's going to teleport you to the next one, and you can continue walking. So when I step on this one, I'm going to teleport it over here, and I can continue on my way. So that's basically how we're going to make these teleport pads, and as you can see they are moving around, we're going to fix that in a second here. But basically that is what we're going to be doing, we're going to be making teleport pads where if you step on one, you're going to put uh, to the other one, and then you can continue on your way. And it's going to be very seamless. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is uh, create your two parts, and then you want to make sure they are anchored, and you want to make sure can collide is on. And make sure especially can touch, can touch right here, can touch needs to be on. Can collide actually does not matter. So the next thing uh, I want to look at are the part names. So uh, what you want to do is name this one teleport uh, 1 and then this one teleport 2. And then after that you want to group them together. So highlight them both and then right click them and group them. And once you have them grouped, you want to uh, name this whatever you want really. And I'm going to be calling this one uh, teleport pads. And what you can do with these two uh, teleport pads now is uh, script them. So basically, if you do want to move them later, just open up the open up the model, click on one, and then go to the move tool in uh, under the model tab up here, and then you can move it around. And basically, I'm just going to move this over here, and that's how we are going to be uh, doing our teleport pads. And uh, just so we can see that we've actually teleported, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to uh, just put some stuff around. Maybe not a zombie spawner. But maybe, uh, actually these uh, cars usually do have a lot of errors. I'm just going to look for meshes here, and this is just going to help us know when we teleported. So I could just put something like this over here, and you guys could just uh, look at the stuff in the background and see that we've teleported. And yeah, that's basically what I'm just going to have in the background. So uh, now I do also want to insert a spawn location, uh, just for myself, just for the video, you guys don't have to do it, uh, you guys don't have to do this. I'm just going to leave the spawn location right here for the video, and uh, basically the next thing we need to do is actually get scripting. So inside this model right here, what we want to do is click plus and insert a script. And once you have a script, you want to call this teleport script. And once you have your teleport script created, what you want to do is go ahead and create a variable for the model. So local model equals script dot parent. This is just a variable in case we need it, we probably won't use it and we might be able to remove it later. But now we will, uh, what we want to do is get a variable for the first part. So local uh, tp1 for the first part equals uh, model. So we actually are going to be using the model variable. Model colon wait for child teleport one. And then what we're going to be doing is creating this uh, second variable right here called tp2. And basically what we can do with this variable is do the exact same thing as the last one and put in teleport2. And now that we have both of our variables, what we can do is actually access both these parts and their properties. And uh, basically there's an event that we want to use. So it's called uh, dot touched. And basically what we're going to be doing is uh, teleporting or moving the player's uh, character to the other teleport. So basically what I'm going to be doing here is tp1 dot uh, touched we want the touched event colon connect function and then inside these brackets right here you just want to type hit and there we go so now what we can do is local uh, char for character equals hit dot parent and then local player equals uh, and right here let's get another variable this one's gonna be called players so local uh, players equals game colon get uh, service and then players. So just like that we have the player service and what we're going to be doing is players colon get player from character. Kind of long but get player from character. And then we pass through the character model. And now we're going to be doing is if player. So if player then. So this basically just makes sure is, uh, that the character model is a character. So an actual player and the player uh, just to ensure that the character model is a player's character. And from there what we're going to be doing is if player then and then in here what you want to do is uh, char dot humanoid root part. Make sure you spell that right or else it won't work. So char dot humanoid root part dot position equals tp2 dot position. And then you want to add a vector 3. So plus vector 3 dot new 0 comma 3.5 comma 0. So basically this line will teleport us to the other teleport part. So I'm just going to make the first teleporter here a uh, color like, uh, let's say, cyan. And uh, the second one over here can be something like uh, this green right here. I'm just going to move the spawn location here. And we will be able to test it out. 
So now I'm gonna go in and uh, step on it. As you can see, I teleport to the other one. We're gonna scrap this one in a second here, but this is just to show you that I got teleported to the other one and I can continue walking in the exact same direction. So say I wanna walk uh, that way. There we go, I get uh, teleported and I'm walking in this direction. So that's basically how the teleport pads work. Now we just need to script the second one. So you can copy this entire piece of code. So after player is down, and go, uh, go down a little bit and then change this to TP2 and change this one over here to TP1. And once you've done this, the teleport pads are essentially complete. And what you can do is test them out. So real quick guys, before you leave the video, I'm going to test them out uh, on the actual, on my actual game right here. And as we can see, we have an issue. So that's why um, we're actually going to be fixing it in a second. We do need to make some edits here. So basically what we're going to be using is a table. So we're going to do local uh, players teleported equals and then an empty table. And what, with this table, what we can do is uh, add basically a cooldown. So if player then in here, we do need to insert the player to the table. So uh, players teleported or not players teleported yet, but basically table dot insert will allow us to insert the player to the table. So table dot insert players teleported because we're inserting to that table players teleported and then the actual player. And then now the player is inside the players teleported uh, table. And then right here we need to do if player and not and uh, not table dot find players teleported player. So this basically allows us to make sure that the player is not in the uh, table. So we're making sure that there is a player and we cannot find that player in the table. And right here, what we need to do is type task dot wait and then your cooldown. So up here, let's make another variable and call this one cooldown. So local cooldown, I'm gonna make mine uh, one second. And then here we need to uh, type cooldown. And then after that, we can go ahead and copy all of this and then replace this line with it and then change over here to TP1. And there we go, that should be everything completed. And I uh, just need to make sure we do put this line uh, there so we can make sure the player doesn't get spam teleported. There we go, now when I hit play, we should be all good. And one more thing guys, I did forget, we need to remove the player from the table afterwards. So we're gonna type uh, table dot remove. And then what we're gonna do is uh, players teleported comma table dot find players teleported and player so it might look like a lot you can pause the video and type it all out make sure you have it all correct and then after that you can copy this and then paste it up here just like that and we should be good to go so now uh, we will have a cooldown on teleporting as you can see i can't teleport but then a second later i'm free i can teleport i can't teleport and i can teleport so basically there is a one second cooldown between teleports and I'm not sure exactly why that happened. As you can see, it is working. And yeah, we're all good. So yeah, that's kind of strange how that happens sometimes. But basically, um, as long as your server has no lag, these teleports will teleport the player to the other teleport. And basically, just allow them to continue uh, moving in the same direction. So if I want to keep moving towards the Dominus, there we go. I'm keep, uh, and I'm just uh, walking in the same direction. So... So guys, if this video did help you, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and join the Discord if you have any issues at all. Feel free to ping me and ask me about the issues and I'll be able to help you. But other than that guys, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.